With layered metaphors and a narrator resembling the author himself, Solzhenitsyn delves into post-World War II Russia, the communist regime, and the pervasive greed and selfishness he observed among his compatriots. The outcome is a tragic tale brimming with gratuitous cruelties, offering a stark portrayal of mid-century Soviet Union. Written in 1959 and published in 1963, the novella is set in 1956, drawing heavily from Solzhenitsyn's own experiences in the Gulag system and as a teacher in rural Russia after the war. Unsurprisingly, it stands as one of Solzhenitsyn's most widely read works. The story unfolds with the narrator, Ignatik, actively seeking employment as a mathematics teacher in a rural corner of the Soviet Union. Eager to escape the suffocating heat and overcrowding of the cities, he yearns for a tranquil existence where he can find solace. Eventually, he is assigned a position at a school situated on a collective farm, a common occurrence in post-war communist Russia. However, this farm lies in a once lush woodland area, now stripped bare due to haphazard logging practices. Ignatic encounters difficulties in finding suitable lodging and soon discovers that his dream of a serene, wooded environment for teaching and contemplation is shattered, replaced by a noisy, violence-ridden town marred by industrialization, with smokestacks belching smoke into the sky. During his encounters, Ignatic meets a woman selling milk at the train station, who reveals that she resides in a nearby small village nestled within the woods, a village that holds the promise of the life he had envisioned. The woman leads him to Matriona's dwelling, comprised of a collection of modest structures. Matriona, an elderly woman in her sixties, inhabits a once grand house that has since fallen into disrepair, mirroring her own frailty and solitude. Although initially exhibiting little enthusiasm for taking on a tenant and the rent he could provide, Matriona reluctantly agrees to accommodate Ignatic. Matriona's dilapidated dwelling is a wretched hovel, plagued by a decaying roof and shoddy caulking infested with mice and roaches. Despite the squalor and the meekness of her character, Ignatic shows kindness towards the elderly woman. He observes the profound sadness that permeates Matriona's life, her two husbands and six natural children have all passed away, leaving her without a government pension. Nevertheless, Matriona remains diligent, finding solace in her arduous labor, even though she receives meager pay from the farm, and sometimes none at all. Remarkably, she never voices any complaints. As Ignatic delves further into village life, he realizes that little has changed since before the communist revolution, witnessing the hardships endured by its residents. Matriona, in particular, has an adopted daughter named Kira, who is engaged to be married. Matriona has promised Kira a portion of her own home upon her passing, providing the couple with timber to construct their own dwelling. Curiously, no alternative timber source is mentioned. Ilya, an elderly man whose father initially built the house Matriona currently occupies, urges Kira to assert her claim to the property immediately so that construction on their future home can commence. One evening, a group of inebriated farmers, riding a stolen tractor, descends upon Matriona's residence without her consent. Despite her discontent and lack of permission, Matriona remains passive and even assists as they systematically dismantle the building, loading two trailers with the salvaged timber. Solzhenitsyn unabashedly criticizes the perceived fatal flaw of the communist system, asserting that by eroding individuality and enforcing communal sharing, the negative traits of the collective community become predominant. The farmer's selfishness and drunkenness exemplify this. As they callously destroy Matriona's sole possession, an asset that has provided her with protection and security throughout the years. The truck driver, hired on a fixed payment, insists on attaching both trailers to his truck to save time and make a single trip instead of two. Matriona offers her assistance in transporting the timber and boards the second trailer, which is disconnected from the truck while attempting to navigate the railway tracks. Tragically, Matriona loses her life when an approaching train barrels through. Solzhenitsyn portrays Matriona's selflessness as an invaluable resource callously exploited by the selfish villagers, who give little consideration to the consequences for the future. She becomes a poignant symbol of Russia during that era, a nation suffering under the grip of communist rule. Through Matriona's fate, Solzhenitsyn illustrates how the villagers' actions reflect the larger plight of the country, once a peaceful and cohesive entity, now dismantled and depleted, transformed into a desolate wasteland.
Ignatic is yearning to return to a bygone era of tranquility is ultimately revealed as a futile endeavor, for the Russia he longs for has been irreversibly destroyed, raised and exploited beyond recognition. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.